all for coming to this uh, presentation, but I would really rather have, a, have it as a discussion, as an exchange yes. of ideas and, and, and uh, maybe questions about Slovakia or Central Europe. Uh, you mentioned one of our big neighbors who is now, of course, going through a difficult time. Uh, we can talk about this as well. Um, Dublin, Ireland uh, was at the beginning of uh, our road uh, and a trip through the European Union uh, during the presidency of Ireland in 2004. So uh, this is a place which uh, uh, has some historical reminiscences for Slovakia and for Slovaks. Uh, as you know and experience daily, there are quite many Slovaks in Ireland. So it's a country where uh, I think they found their second home. And uh, I believe there are many similarities uh, in terms of culture, in terms of uh, economic development, uh, um, our historical developments uh, uh, from uh, being under some supervision to independence, uh, which we can share. So um, I'm very happy to, to be here and uh, uh, happy to, to discuss some of these issues with you. I will keep my uh, remarks, my presentation to 15-20 minutes so that there is more, more time for, for discussion, for questions, because I believe these are probably more interesting. So I'll just go quickly through some of the slides uh, which I have put uh, on the paper because they may help you also to, to follow the, some of the ideas. Um, what I would like to focus upon is uh, um, kind of three key elements. Uh, uh, one is, because we are in Ireland, I think it would be interesting to look at some comparisons between uh, Ireland and Slovakia from the economic and fiscal point of view, which is the area where I, I am focusing. Uh, also look at uh, some of the experiences, successes, failures, challenges that we see from Slovak perspective as part of the EU and uh, our membership also in the Eurozone. And uh, then talk a little br broader about uh, uh, how we see some special developments in, in the Europe Eurozone area from the Slovak perspective. Um, so with this in mind, uh, going to the first part, uh, which is kind of looking, comparing Slovakia Island from the economic and f fiscal perspective. Um, as I mentioned, I think you know, the size very similar, some historical uh, similarities. Uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, also differences. Um, I think when you look at this uh, table, uh, you will see that in terms of GDP, um, we have gone through some difficult times uh, relatively re recently, but uh, now the economy as part of the overall European economy and Eurozone uh, is recovering. Uh, we project GDP growth this year at around 2.3%. Actually, these numbers on this table are uh, from the winter economic forecast uh, published by the European Commission. I will mention some areas where we actually don't agree with the European Commission, uh, which is part of democracy, but uh, that's the reality. Um, uh, so I think in, in the same way, uh, in Ireland, the GDP growing, I think the economic kind of projections for, the, for this and uh, following years is uh, quite optimistic. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, GDP, the general government, government balance uh, as percentage of GDP, for us deficit issue is uh, important. Uh, actually, a strategic goal for the Ministry of Finance in Slovakia for this year is to uh, exit from EDP, which is the Excessive Deficit Procedure, uh, where Slovakia uh, fell in 2009 as uh, part of the uh, difficult de uh, developments not only in uh, Slovakia but also within the Eurozone and, and EU. Um, so we uh, are doing everything possible to get out of the EDP, which in our case means that we have to have a deficit under 3% uh, last year, 2013, as well as sustainable deficit reduction for the following years. Now, these numbers here, 3.3, 3.4 next year, uh, this is the area where we don't agree with Commission, and uh, I had actually a meeting with the ECFIN, uh, which is the Directory General in Brussels in charge of, as you know, of the uh, kind of economic policy within the uh, European Union, um, and uh, we are now discussing with them, uh, trying to show, show the uh, European Commission that actually we will be under 3% this year and the following years. And uh, also, uh, we will be uh, adopting some additional uh, uh, measures, structural uh, consolidation measures uh, within the next two, three weeks that will put us on a sustain sustainable path of deficit reduction. 
the debt issue, which is at the very bottom, uh, again, numbers which we don't agree. <laughs> Uh, although they, they, they are relatively low, and uh, especially comparing with Ireland, where the that level is uh, uh, quite high because of the relatively recent experience with the recapitalization of banks and, and uh, uh, issues around this. So in Slovakia, the debt uh, level is around 55, 56. What is important uh, uh, and why we are worried about this level is that uh, uh, in Slovakia we have so-called constitutional debt cap. Uh, which is set at 60 percent, um, and uh, actually according to the uh, to the law, constitutional law, uh, if we get over 60 percent, the government has to resign. But already on the way towards 60 uh, percent, uh, uh, there are some quite significant uh, measures and punishments for the government. Uh, if you get at 55 level, uh, the next year expenditures of the government have to be cut by 3 percent. And if you hit 57% uh, the next year, the deficit has to be zero, uh, which uh, would mean if we hit 57% is more or less a political suicide because we have to cut somewhere, uh, in, in our case, almost 3% of GDP, uh, which as you can imagine is not easy. Uh, so, <clears throat> so the numbers that you see here, which are coming from the European Commission, uh, we believe uh, that uh, through the deficit reduction, uh, through some uh, debt buybacks, etc., will be certainly under 57%, uh, which is a kind of uh, political red, red line. Uh, let's put it this way. Um, in terms of the kind of economic structure, as you see on this uh, table, um, Again, some similarities, uh, some similarities as well as differences. I think the, the main ones are, and this is where we would like to improve, is that uh, a big uh, part of uh, Irish economy is in information and communication technologies, and uh, as well as in uh, in uh, finance insurance. Uh, we already had discussion during the lunch before that. Uh, uh, Slovak economy, which uh, was traditionally before the um, independence and before the uh, re revolution under the socialist time, Slovakia was a heavy metallurgy uh, producer. Uh, we were one of the largest producers of weapons, I think number four in the world. Um, and uh, after the revolution in 1989 and the change of the regime, uh, there was a major restructuring of the Slovak economy into a modern economy uh, which would be uh, lighter, more productive, and more uh, competitive. Uh, uh, this was uh, very much driven by foreign investors who came to Slovakia, uh, such as uh, Volkswagen, such as uh, uh, car manufacturers like Kia, uh, Peugeot Citroën, um, uh, Samsung, and so on. Uh, those were really the drivers of economic development uh, uh, during the years of 2000. Um, and uh, they really brought a lot of the economic growth, which then followed, especially during the years 2006 to 2010, which were really the high growth years. And if you look at <coughs> uh, last 10 years, the GDP growth in Slovakia was uh, on average at 5% of GDP per year. So it was, as I almost called tiger of, of Europe, uh, we were kind of called uh, Slovakia tiger of Central Europe. And this was really <coughs> very important for us, but now, and going back to this issue of information, communication, etc., uh, one of the key issues for us is to uh, take the next step, which is to uh, move Slovak economy into the innovative uh, industry, uh, which would be very much uh, focused not on uh, cheap labor force, but on the skills, knowledge of people, and uh, uh, basically new ideas for economic development. Uh, I think th this is quite interesting slide because it shows uh, the kind of convergence path in terms of economic uh, development in Slovakia where uh, as you can see we have moved uh, just 10 years ago when we were entering uh, uh, European Union Slovakia in terms of the GDP level was uh, around 57 percent of uh, EU uh, we, we were able to grow in those 10 years to uh, almost 76 percent so quite a strong economic growth uh, and uh, getting closer to uh, to the EU average. Uh, so hopefully we'll catch up at some point with Ireland, but uh, we'll see. And uh, uh, this is a kind of comparison of the 
uh, of Ireland, Slovakia and EU28. Um, we can see the strong growth, especially as I already mentioned those years, 2004, 2008, <coughs> and then the major uh, fall <coughs> and decline, economic decline, especially in 2009, um, and uh, then gradual recovery, which is now becoming much more obvious. Uh, a few things about the uh, process of integration and uh, successes as well as failures. So, as was already mentioned, we joined uh, uh, European Union in 2004. Then we entered into the ERM mechanism as a uh, first step towards uh, entering the Eurozone, uh, accession to the Schengen area. <laughs> entering Eurozone in 2009. Uh, so we are also this year celebrating five years of our membership in the, in the Eurozone. Um, and uh, we will have presidency of the EU in, in the second half of 2016, uh, for which we are also kind of preparing already now, because as you know from your experience, it's quite a oh. he heavy duty exercise. Um, in terms of uh, our successes, uh, uh, we believe that our membership in the European Union helped us to stabilize our democratic institutions. Um, um, it was a major, Im uh, a major impulse uh, to the economic and social development, and uh, certainly the use of the EU funds uh, were critical elements for public investment. And today, um, basically, the EU funds uh, represents about 75% of our public investment, so this is a critical element in moving uh, eco economic forward. Um, this is comparison with the so-called Visegrad four countries, uh, so these are our main neighbors and, in a way, uh, peer countries, uh, meaning uh, Hungary, Poland, as well as Czech Republic. As you can see, Slovakia is the uh, blue line, and uh, it uh, shows that we, we are really the tiger, meaning uh, growing faster than, uh, than uh, the other three. Uh, Poland is uh, another country that is very dynamically uh, developing uh, and really growing each year. Czech Republic, as you can see, was more or less uh, stagnating in terms of its economic growth, uh, and uh, Hungary uh, has also experienced some, some growth, but the recent years were not, not the best. So, um, so we have, uh, and I think this is especially when looking at the fact that uh, we are part of Czech <coughs> Czechoslovakia and the le less developed part of Czechoslovakia, the fact that uh, the uh, developments during the uh, uh, years of uh, uh, separation uh, after 1993 have shown that Slovakia was really able to grow economically and get closer in terms of its economic uh, performance <coughs> and uh, GDP to the level of, of the Czech Republic. Some, some of the challenges uh, as far as uh, Euro area is concerned, uh, uh, I think it's a good sign that some uh, new countries are joining. Uh, uh, Latvia, as you know, is a member of the Eurozone since uh, January 1st. Uh, Lithuania most probably uh, is to become the new member uh, starting uh, January 1st next, next year. As for the countries uh, who are our peer group, Czech Republic, Hungary, Poland, um, it's not clear uh, and it's certainly part of their decision when they want to enter and at which point, but certainly uh, we believe that uh, um, the worst time of uh, Eurozone is over. Um, you may remember the second half, end of 2012, uh, a lot of discussion because of Greece and Spain, etc., about the collapse of Eurozone, about uh, different type of exits of countries. Um, we believe that now we are in a different shape and uh, that uh, we, have a, um, we have a situation where Eurozone is a sustainable part of the, of, of the international construct. Of course, these uh, uh, changes which uh, have happened uh, in Eurozone, but also within European Union, um, uh, are profound, and uh, they are especially in the area of uh, 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 greater, greater integration in the monetary and fiscal areas. 
um, we all, and you already mentioned at the very beginning, that the banking union is uh, one of the key areas of such, uh, such integration. Um, we have been together with other countries around the table discussing uh, those issues related to the three pillars of the banking union, meaning single supervisory mechanism, single resolution mechanism, as well as deposit guarantee scheme. Um, I'm sure that uh, you have heard already a lot about uh, those elements. So I'll just uh, mention some of the issues that were important for us from the solar perspective. Uh, basically, our banking sector is uh, uh, characterized by the fact that uh, it is, uh, um, I would say, 95% of our banking sector, financial sector, is owned uh, by foreign banking institutions, mostly from Austria, but also from Italy, from Germany. Um, and uh, uh, this, of course, has an impact also how we look at the banking union. Uh, we, uh, as uh, Slovakia, we uh, have gone through the process of cleaning the balance sheets of our banks in uh, 2000, around the year 2000, 2001, when we actually spent 12% of our GDP on recapitalization of these banks and, uh, and uh, also on their privatization. Uh, so, uh, currently we are in the situation where our banks are healthy, we don't see any major problems and uh, 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 that's why we are not counting on much help from, from the banking union or we don't see this as a mechanism that should be needed for, for the Slovak banking sector. Uh, our main interest, especially when looking at uh, the creation of the single resolution mechanism and single resolution fund, uh, was to, on one hand, to protect uh, our taxpayers um, uh, in the sense that uh, we strongly believe that any banks who would need uh, help uh, from the uh, single resolution fund and from the kind of mutualized parts of the resolution mechanism, that uh, the first uh, step should be so-called bail-in uh, process uh, where the shareholders and uh, the uh, and, and, and the bondholders, etc., should contribute to the uh, improvement of the situation of the bank. Only after that, the public services should be available. Uh, so the bailing element is uh, very critical for us and was part of uh, our uh, position during the negotiations about the banking union. Also, uh, our next uh, priority was to protect as much as possible any negative impacts uh, and to protect the national budget. Um, that's why, uh, as far as the construct of the single resolution fund is concerned, uh, we were uh, for uh, uh, the creation of the national compartments, and uh, we were also uh, rather for slower mutualization of the of of, of the funds, uh, because we believe they do create a certain level of uh, moral hazard uh, uh, through through the mutualization process. As you know, as part of the trialogue and as a result of the discussions with the European Parliament, the process of creating the single resolution fund was shortened to eight years and the process of uh, mutualization was front-loaded, uh, so there is a quickened process of mutualization in the first two years or three years. Um, we understand this is part of the, uh, part, part of the compromise, though we were not, frankly, very happy with this outcome. And uh, uh, we are, as, as a country, uh, which is, as I already mentioned at the beginning, uh, where most of the banking sector is owned by cross-border uh, uh, banking institutions, <coughs> such as Erste, Raiffeisen, etc., uh, we are very much uh, interested in making sure that any cross-border uh, bank resolution, uh, so if any of these groups would uh, need any uh, capital uh, support uh, in your capitalization, that this would not be done at the expense of the subsidiaries which are healthy. And because we believe that our uh, subsidiaries or banks in Slovakia are healthy, uh, we <coughs> believe that sh such burden sharing should be done based on the uh, risk asset or risk weighted asset approach. And this is what we were kind of pushing as part of the intergovernmental agreement process uh, where we were uh, pushing this type of approach uh, uh, for any cases of cross-border board, uh, cross-border banking resolution. We can discuss more if we have questions later on, but uh, I just want to kind of show some of the key elements. 
Um, now, looking into the future, uh, we do believe that uh, the creation of the banking union should not be the end of the process of, um, of the integration within the monetary union. Uh, we believe that we need uh, to move uh, uh, further. Uh, part of that should be uh, creating um, a fiscal capacity for the Eurozone, uh, a kind of Eurozone budget. Um, uh, of course, uh, there are many questions how to create the, the, uh, such a budget, what should be the sources, uh, the revenue uh, for such fund. Uh, we are open also to the possibility of issuing euro bonds. Uh, uh, our key issue is that uh, we believe that such budget should have uh, uh, counter cyclical focus. It means uh, uh, any any, any policies or areas that should be supported from such budget uh, should, should focus on counter cyclical issues such as unemployment, uh, social policies, etc. Et um, as part of this, uh, uh, we were not very happy, frankly, with so called con contractual arrangements as they were originally uh, suggested uh, because it was not clear uh, why there should be. Uh, some limitations for the policies of the governments without uh, making clear uh, what uh, what those arrangements should cover and, and what would be the kind of positive impact on the countries. And we can talk again longer about, about this, uh, but uh, in general we are in support of further integration uh, and we believe that, uh, uh, that we need to identify uh, such areas uh, of integration which would help the countries to get out of of uh, the situations when uh, they are in difficult economic situation. Um, I think there was some discussion, again, I don't want to go into too many details of those elements of kind of Eurozone discussions about so-called ex-ante coordination of economic reforms. Uh, again, uh, I think in, within Eurozone space, uh, this is something that, that needs to be discussed as part of the uh, integration of economic policies, but uh, this is a kind of ongoing process. Now, uh, to kind of bring my presentation to the closure, where we see our key challenges in the economic and fiscal area. Um, as I already mentioned, uh, uh, we want to put the uh, economic uh, progress on more sustainable paths, especially focused on uh, creating new, um, I would say, innovative economy. Uh, one of the <coughs> problems, challenges we have is uh, what are the sources of um, uh, of the internal investment. Um, due to the austerity measures and deficit cutting, uh, the possibilities of the uh, national budget are very limited for, uh, for the investment uh, expenditures. Um, also, as I mentioned, we have this uh, debt uh, clause. Uh, mm. uh, so we could borrow relatively well. I mean, we have the cheapest financing in solar history on the international markets, but because of the constitutional cap we cannot borrow. So uh, uh, we are kind of looking at ways how we can help with stimulating investment into domestic economy. And uh, that's why what we, uh, what we have decided to do, what the government decided to do is to uh, use EU funds in an, in an innovative way uh, by allocating some percentage of the uh, future EU funds which will be coming to Slovakia between 2014 and 2020. Uh, we are supposed to receive some around 14 billion euro during that time, and um, until now most of the funds were used for uh, basically one-time transfers, grants, and so on. Uh, so now the decision was taken to allocate uh, initially, but this could grow initially 3% of this amount into so-called uh, Slovak Investment Holding, uh, which is a quasi-sovereign fund uh, which will focus on uh, in investments into infrastructure, SME development, uh, <coughs> and new startups. And, and uh, part of the role will be to leverage these funds uh, also with uh, private sources. Um, another big issue for us is the unemployment. Uh, we have almost 14% unemployment in Slovakia. Uh, so uh, uh, this is very much a structural unemployment. Uh, just to give you an example, even in, to, uh, in the year 2008, if you remember, Slovakia was at that time growing by almost 10%. Uh, the unemployment was at uh, was more than eight uh, percent. So this is a structural structural unemployment, which is uh, partly related to the to that switch from the kind of socialist economy to the to the uh, modern economy. 
uh, to the regional differences between Western Slovakia, Eastern Slovakia, which st- still exist, as well as to, frankly, to quite a large uh, Roma population, uh, which is uh, quite difficult in terms of integrating into the labor market. Uh, so dealing with this level, high level unemployment is uh, certainly a major uh, challenge for us. Um, I could go through all these uh, country-specific recommendations, which you know from this semester, but uh, European semester, but I think that uh, this would be too much of details. Um, I think that uh, I have kind of covered mo- most of the key, key issues that I did want to mention, and uh, I would rather stop here, sure. and, uh, if you agree. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would uh, then open up for the questions or comments. Sure. And thank you for the attention, of course. Well, thank you very much uh, for that presentation. Um, <coughs> it has been-